Welcome, welcome, welcome in everybody to your latest edition of a Monday Night Aegis League of Legends action. Aegis Defenders League is in its new and improved qualifier stage. Yes, qualifier stage. It is, we got our, I believe, a top I'm trying to do the math way too quickly here on on stream here over i believe top 10 teams are uh, top eight that are selected and moved into this a new two-week sprint where the goal is simple orbital don't be the bottom four teams if you're if you're outside the bottom four you are heading to playoffs yes it is that is going to be outside and it is 12 teams and again 12 four teams as you go. said uh four bottom four eliminated and that's going to be a little bit difficult because the teams are ready to go because they have a lot on the line wow yeah, all right. So we'll break down and talk about our teams a little bit later. Uh, we'll introduce them a little more formally. But informally, we were sitting here watching Dorado Gaming Delta and Iridescent Don Hydra. Iridescent Don Hydra, a returning team from last ADL split. They did make the playoffs in that split. So keep that in mind as we go forward. We are into the draft, though, with Dorado Gaming Esports' latest roster, Delta, on that blue side. It looks like we're starting with, starting with Band Away, some pretty powerful top laners, Arbital, the Renekton and the Udyr, respectively, already off the board. Yep, you got to take them away. I don't see any reason not to, especially if you're focused against IDH. It, it, this is just heavily taking care of Sluder and Maharaga. Now, on the other side, the Udyr, I mean, I think this one is just hard slated at Shane. You just don't want to let that one through. It is not very niche right now, or, or I would say it is pretty niche right now. It's just not very meta. But the Nautilus does make sense. At this point, I think you are focused on some of the ADCs. I think you need to take away Ezreal uh, or Ash, one or the other. Uh, that might be on ADH's side, though. But for Dorado Gaming, you are a little bit worried, I think, with how many power picks are currently available. You're leaving a lot on the table. And if you want to play along that side, it is going to be very problematic. That one, though, the Braum kind of makes sense. It's, I mean, you're taking away a lot of safety, though, on either side. You take there's a lot of safety just getting taken away. This is a little bit interesting, right? You don't always see drafts where the priority bans are top powerful top laners in the first phase and then powerful support champions. Maybe you see like one of each, but not two of each already taken away here. And look, Asante also catching a ban here. If this is locked in for here, it's not Hydra. So that is a lot of the top lane pool pinched and like you were really harping on Orbital to a you know a great degree none of the marksmen are taken away in a meta where you get games with four marksmen currently and it's not a weird it's not a, it, it's not weird it's just the meta we're in so if i'm dorado gaming i'm loving it i get my first pick whatever ad carry i want and it's the ash why not if it's left up easiest b1 in the world right now i love the fact that ash is slowly starting to become a higher priority or i wouldn't even say slowly it's a higher priority than the ezreal or anything like that it is the go-to adc right now you compare it with just about everything granted uh, enchanted supports you don't want to do but any engage tool on the table is going to be powerful here i mean the leona is still very much available you have to grab the ezreal here if you're idh you can't let the one go over double adc would be ash ezreal and you would lock in a pretty powerful squad so Grab the Ezreal. I would say grab the Leona as well. Uh, flex the Ezreal into that mid lane and then look at a different ADC outside. Or maybe look for that far range. I think just recently we saw, um, or at least I saw someone try and play Jin into it. There's some points, but I really want to see the Leona here. I don't think IDH can afford to give that one over. Yeah, as the Ezreal aficionado, there are two schools of thought when going up against him to make his life annoying. Orbital, you harped on the one, which is trying to range him, which you can't get done with that gen. It can be very pesky. Other way is pick a champion that just sits in the minion wave. It's so annoying as Ezra when you cannot fire mystic shots because they're just sitting in the wave. Uh, that's why it's really annoying to play against Caitlyn's. It can be pretty annoying to play against Lucian's in a lot of ways like that. Nyla's very annoying. Uh, Samira can be on top of that. So it's not necessarily the answer that we'll get here. What I'm more surprised about is the fact that, like you mentioned, why are we not slamming the Leona? I can't believe these two picks are being given over Dorado Gaming. They, they, this is an all-star draft already. Brand Jungle, Leona, Ash, bottom lane, like, ooh. Both of these squads also suffer from the same thing. They're currently sitting at a 2-3 record in series score, and I think both had the 6-7 game record as well, and that means to me that they need all the help that they can get. I'm not saying that as a knock or anything like that, but it has to stand to reason that you got into this a little bit on the weak side because of that you need the meta help as much as possible to overcome that grass here's the issue if this alawi is locked in it is going to be a very much comfort pick with sluter picking that one up you have very little engage tools right now the zinzao is good but you're up against a brand and brand is going to love this this is a composition on idh's side that requires you to kind of sit close and sit personal brand loves when people clump up 
brand loves whenever a person needs to play within a certain space right now dorado gaming really really liking this one and now all you have to do ban out supports all of a sudden you're golden yeah, it's, it's really all lining up for them. I'm glad I made that point. Brand is strongest when he's going into comps with a lot of melees and a lot of melees that are just trying to front line because Brand, if he drops his whole combo on anybody, it is chunking their health bar because nobody's itemizing that much MR in the first place. And Alawi certainly is not as well. So we'll see as we get into the second phase of bands where some of these fly off to. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you all along here over that, that big brand of yours. Yeah, let's just start throwing support bands down. Like, what supports do we not want to deal with Leona? Like, you know, Rel's a great one. You've now, I mean, I don't know where Hydra go here. That, they've lost the Rel, they've lost the Braum. They banned away Nautilus, they can't pick Leona. At this point, maybe you lean into just reinforcing the poke bottom lane here. Maybe if uh, if uh, I Beyond Godly likes to play that Karma, uh, Karma Ezreal still can work because I don't think you're going to get any of these engaged tank, uh, engage tank combos for this Ezreal. I love this hover here because that's actually, that's pretty funny actually. So this is an assumption that the mid lane Draven could come out. Uh, and you can't Ooh. let that one go through. So it's been seen lately. Oh. I think Chovy did it before or just in general, but there's a karma that you were mentioning as well. So we are so far, I mean, pretty much hit it on the head is these are all champions that, you know, pretty freely can be flexed around and dealt with. I'm just not like I can, uh, I'm just not really liking IDH's philosophy here right now. They left a lot open. They didn't grab a lot of the power. So they are assuming that their general picks, their comfort picks is going to be more, uh, more, important this time around you're looking for a mid lane you need a little bit of cc i wouldn't be upset to see a syndra i've seen it around uh, a little bit however the aurora is still very much available i believe that is currently up and running for anyone that does wish to play so you can't do that alistar is one that's dropped oh. down i it's good it's not great it is considered a counter to the leona it's still not s tier at the current moment yeah, I, I, you know, I will say I did actually totally blank that Alistair was still available. He he definitely fits into the that camp of, you know, pretty powerful tank engage based supports right now. They're at the top of the meta. So it's good to get that Alistair. But I man, I just love the only thing is I'm a, I well, this isn't even a blind Camille. So I'm not even actually that worried about Camille. You, <laughs> you got your top lane counter pick. You're now going to blind the Corky, which is the you know, fits the double marksman mid combination. Corky can't really be threatened by anybody in the mid lane like you can get a matchup you like if you're ID Hydra, but this is a slam dunk draft from Dorado Gaming Delta to kick off this series. Yes, and they need it. Here's the thing. Whenever we talk about series, I always like to talk about how comfortable you're going to be in a lot of these scenarios. And, you know, playing the meta is about as comfortable as you can get. I mean, these champions are very, very simple to go with. You have a double engage on Dorado Gaming. The way on the other side is the only, I would say, real S tier meta currently coming out of IDH. Zin's, well, Ezreal, I guess you could say as well, but mm -hmm. the forward lining composition doesn't feel great uh, to me from IDH's side. You take a look at that Alawi, you take a look at the Alistar and the Zin Zhao, unless you're playing them to high efficiency and you play aggressive in the early game, I don't see this working out very well. However, they can surprise me. That is no side uh, of their own. If they come out with a lot of power, that can be a huge part for IDH to really get off on a game one start. Well, let's start. Let's get back to orbital. What we want to do in the pre-show before these teams jumped into draft. We'll introduce our squads. We'll start with the blue side team here, hailing from that Bilgewater division, Dorado Gaming and Delta. Like orbital mentioned, one of our two and three teams. I believe we actually have three. Oh no, we've got four teams at two and three coming into this qualifier. We've got two of them on show for today. But Dorado Gaming Delta's roster goes as accordingly. Top lane is a Saluter. Then you've got Mahoraga. Mahoraga. I think in the jungle, Maharaga. Thank you for the correction there, production. Uh, Scruff in the mid lane, Husky Templar, and then False rounding out this roster. And, you know, Dorado Gaming, certainly Orbital, a uh, organization that is one of those staple organizations at this level of tier three play, always fielding competitive rosters. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're hoping to do here. I love what they've done. It seems like on paper, they've done very well. I've seen some of their other teams uh, play throughout the Aegis divisions and granted some of them have, you know, fared better than others. And, you know, this is one of those that they are hoping to punch into the uh, into the, uh, the bracket stage, the playoffs as well. So hopefully it works out with them and, you know, we'll see who steps up here today. 
Now on the other side, our challengers are Iridus and Don Hydra, still rocking some of their members that I recognize from previous iterations of this roster. But for now, this iteration goes as follows. You've got Shane there, Shane 10 in the top lane. Sutek still returns, one of those returning members in the jungle. You throw XBKP, BKP, I guess we'll call him in the mid lane. You got Epic Fail Guy also returning in his AD carrier role. And then I, Beyond Godly, rounds out at the support position. And as you can see, Orbital already told you, but now you officially see it with your own eyeballs. Both of these teams are two and three six and seven in game score and both are currently sitting in elimination spots they virtually orbital have to win out to go two and all in this qualifier stage to make the playoffs all these two and three teams basically have to go two and oh to make it out of the qualifier stage yeah it's pretty dangerous here and this it all kicks off here uh for reference there are two days, or, or I want to say, yeah, two weeks of uh, this qualifier. You have to go ahead and push onwards. A couple of our first seed squads have already made it in, so they are pretty dang happy about it. On the flip end, though, there's, you know, shakiness like we see here. And there are some teams that need it a lot more than others. These two teams are fighting for that chance to even stay within the bracket. So whoever wins here, going to be real happy about it. Whoever wins here are going to be real happy about it. For us on the desk here after a draft, we're pretty happy with how Dorado Gaming and Delta are going to start out their escapade here with the draft they've given us. But draft is, I would even say, half of the battle in most games of League of Legends. It certainly could be a lot more. And, well, we potentially uh, we, we have a sponsor that knows a little bit about how powerful the draft is in all your games at home. But I won't allude to it too much. Uh, what I will say is we have a quick word coming from our sponsors here before we get into game one. So let we'll you guys run that one through. We'll be back after that break to see how this series starts off. Dorado Gaming Delta versus ID Hydra. Someone is going to come out with a 1-0 lead that you won't want to miss. Quick shout out to ProComps, our sponsor and a game changer app for the league community. This isn't just like the other tools. It's your personal draft coach, perfect for both teams and solo players. In fact, you can pair it with any other app you use. ProComp stands out with features like custom champion pools, personalized tier lists, and live draft advice. Think of it as having a virtual coach and a strategy toolkit all in one. They offer real-time champion ban recommendations. They already have over 200,000 downloads and thousands of daily users just like you. ProComps is user-friendly and totally free. It is a no-brainer to at least give it a go. Download ProComps now and you'll experience a whole new level of drafting power in your league games. Go to ProComps.gg, download it from Overwolf, or click the panel below on our stream.
Here we are, folks, back on Sumner's Rift. The first time on a Sumner's Rift in the ADL for the qualifiers stage. Iridescent Don Hydra on your red side. Dorado Gaming and Delta on your blue side. Very quickly as you might have a level one escapade. We do have one sub coming in here. It looks like Chucko slotting into the jungle role and Maharaga is slotting back up towards top side. He is the starting jungler, so we are missing the Dorado Gaming top laner. Keep that in mind as things goes on. And Orbital, it seems like, well, we might not get too many level one escapades, but Epic Fail Guy might have to start Arcane Shift here if he's not safe enough. He will get spotted. Oh, hey, he doesn't even have to start Arcane Shift. He's going to be safe, but it is ID Hydra that have to surrender their bottom quadrant jungle. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's just with the Leona. You're pretty happy about that one. Alistar can be a pretty good uh, deep dive in, but you don't want a hard dive. Instead, you get the vision of your own. And this gives us a little bit of time. Uh, you mentioned that, yes, there is a sub going in. Shuko is in the jungle. However, that does punch the regular top lane aspect in, or the regular jungler of Maharaga into the top lane. So with that piece of information, it is going to be a little bit of a different say. Uh, Shuko will have to do quite a bit to step into the shoes here, especially with basically your team's hopes on the line. And that'll be, you know, the big selling point here on the day of course maharaga doing the exact same going with the flash and teleport to me instead of the usual what i think ignite teleport is what we normally see so you know yeah. give it a little bit of time see how that works out give it a little bit of time indeed certainly going to be testing how we feel about our ability to analyze drafts here at orbital based off of how dorado gaming delta do in this one and it's going to be early agency over to the ID Hydra side. Sutek on the Zinzao. You certainly expect him to be a bit more active on the rift after first clears. This is the one downside of that brand. He's all about just power farming up and relying on his lanes getting advantages. I mean, you don't really have any issues either. You take a look, really, it's only towards the latter stages that you're going to be real worried uh, of this first clear. Um, and, you know, you have a good idea that, hey, Zinzao's on the top side of the map. No real worries there. The ward just timed out and the blue buff was still not taken. So you're going to go ahead and send false over. Chuko is going to have all the time in the world to power up. And it's really going to be on Sutek. Uh, this player that decided to go ahead and go with the Zinzao, not unheard of, but you do need to apply a little bit of early game pressure to really have. And it looks like you might actually find it as Sutek is going towards a lane. That is actively getting pushed in a little bit, so I'm not sure if that's the right call to make. Yeah, maybe you thought there might be a re-engage from Maharaga after he had his soul stolen there by the Alawi, but does not end up committing, and that means that Chuko Chuko is very, very far ahead on his clear. I mean, Brand is already going to outclear his uh, Zinzao, but this is uh, this is going to be what basically a three camp lead. I mean, it's going to be a really comfortable one, at least. Not not the fastest, but I think it's going to be really comfortable. Mid lane, we're seeing Scarf getting shoved in as well, but the timing is going to be the big difference. Chuko is going to find this ward. Take a look at this scuttle, though. Take a look at how close Sutek currently is. It's going to be a level 4 versus oh. level 3, but it's a squishy one, and Chuko knows that the blue vial hasn't been taken, so calling in the bot lane, I really like this plan. Yeah, really heads up play there. And he's actually going to blind, find Sutek in that brush, hits him with the W. We might have some action early oh. on. Sutek's going to secure the scuttle with a smite. False is going to try and backpedal here. on Godly does get the first stun. They're going to try and lock down Leona. Good flash to avoid the root coming across from BKP as he roams over first. Bit of an early win there for ID Hydra, and things are going even better in the top lane, it seems. Yeah, I mean, the entirety, we mentioned before that for IDH, they do have to play a little bit strong-handed. Their entire composition relies cool. on uh, the lanes doing well and everyone kind of overwhelming their opponent. They're doing it so far. I would like to point out as well, Sutek dropped a ward right in front of Chuko, which is why Chuko tried to prime that side. And that's a flash under the tower as Shane. I mean, you had to know that was coming, right? You had to. I, I was I was just waiting. I was nervously waiting. There will be a trade here for uh, for Chuko as he does. Well, OK, the teleport will secure it. The W, maybe the burn will be enough. He's going to try to give it right back. Oh, that's a value like jungler that. right there. Make sure the Maharaga isn't too far behind after surrendering on that first blood. I like that call. You go ahead and grab that kill back. Of course, that's still win for Shane, who is going to try and give it their best call. They don't want to TP, which I mean, you don't need to. The way he's pressured under tower, so you got plenty of time. But the difference is being here, IDH, you had to win lane early, and you're not per se winning out heavily, but you're getting the advantages, and that's allowed Sutek to play a little bit more aggressive. That ward weight and drop 
and the fact that uh godly was allowed to roam in early and be able to pinch was wild to me so overall i like what idh are doing they're kind of proving me wrong already saying power picks aren't everything but it is the early game we'll have to see how mid game rolls out yep still a lot of time here Sutek trying to solo out the dragon himself will be spotted attempting this we have on the way pings coming across from both choco and the bottom lane of Dorado Gaming Delta, and they are going to just oh, force no. Sutek off. He's already far too low. Ivion Godly has to go in just to get them off of the Zinzal, but he might pay for his life. He does have the Flash, Jeez. but he's getting cut off from by Maharaga oh. as all of the Delta squad show up bot side to pick up the kill and a pretty free dragon. I, I don't think Maharaga needed to do that, but I think it was the identification that Shane might TP in. So I like it. You go ahead and call that one down. Of course, that will give a pretty significant lane lead with the CS department for Shane, who, again, very much in control of this top lane. As much as we kind of harped on the Alawi pick, in team play, it might not work. In solo play, though, it is considered one of the most dominant solo lane yeah. picks out there if played to right efficiency. That, is, I would feel, is like up there with like Dr. Mundo, Asante, these other bully champions. So, I mean, if I'm Shane, I'm saying, guys, don't get out of the way. Don't get crazy. Don't give kills. We'll be okay. Yeah, Shane, I mean, the Alawi, I think about her as, as a matchup nightmare in the same sense as Mordekaiser when you try and deal with a fed Alawi. It's, hmm. it, it's even hard to, like, try and 2v1 because if you don't, if you time your engage with her leap of faith, she will not only drop, you know, eight tentacles right on your head that delete your health bar, but she'll heal about half of the, your health bar back herself. So we'll have to watch oh. as that goes on as we have a mid lane gank coming across. Finally just spare down for BKP. Whiffs the root, but does have the severing bolt oh. that will force a flash. Flash for flash, Good though. Sutek going under the turret and will catch out. Oh, what a Trying to burn through Leona. Does get that stun and will find the trade. False coming up with a quick hands to pick up a trade there for Dorado Gaming. Oh my God, that was clutch coming out of False there. It was heavily necessary that you get that stun down and you make Whoa. it work. But of course, this challenge oh. right back, false. Woo! Gets the ignite on his head. Still gonna be healthy enough. That Q from BKP oh, hits wow. the minion. So false will actually end up getting out. And nobody gonna die after we just gave so much credit to over to false. <laughs> I'm amazed you didn't go for the severed strike. That would have been way better uh, to send down on false's head. But oh. I mean, you don't get it. Top lane, we're seeing a battle. I mean, Maharaga is just gonna end up with a lot of low HP. Still though, this is getting spicy. You can tell that a majority share of this squad of IDH is they're wanting to fight and they're gonna get it. Good oh, flash. Flash there, flash followed by Beyond Godly. He's not gonna let Hunky Templar get out. He even burns the barrier. Couple more mystic shots to do it. Epic fail guy misses it, but the autos are there to pick up the kill. Bot top side though, we may have an answer for Shane's escapades. The Alawi does not have Leap of Faith available. Big ultimate not available. Gonna try and see if he could turn on to oh, Maharaga. Chuko though does miss the stun and that's the only stun they've got in this gank, and that means this Shane can just walk out of his first 2v1. I think that's smart. You go ahead. Now, granted, I wonder if Maharaga would have been better just trying to ult him with the Hexac Ultimatum. However, re-engagement this time. Sutek ready for this fight. Yeah, once it feels like woes of the first early minutes of this game. Sutek begging Maharaga to go in, but he holds his resolve. And he'll look for a reset there, holding up Sutek once more. Luckily, not too bad of a play as there is a scuttle crab close by. Hey, Sutek might actually be more interested in this dive. Is going to spot Maharaga trying to reset. Stops with the wind, becomes lightning, and just goes right in. Oh, Look, shot out. Bad. They do get the stun. Big shield. Hex take ultimate him that? down. Maharaga just um, turned Sutek into mincemeat. The hesitation was your issue. You could have had that kill if you were more decisive. And that's going to be your problem. Now VKP is going to find one too. Yeah, there's the stun locked down from False. Scruff trying to push all of his damage out with the Phosphorus Bomb, but it's a not enough just yet. But that won't be able to, oh, you won't be able to get no. away with that for long. And well, it might be Ibeon Godly that falls. No unbreakable will. So this is a way squishier cow for Ibeon Godly. Scruff finds that one oh, arrow to the flash. face of Sutek. Good flash from BKP. Still though, it's Dorado Gaming starting to ramp up their skirmish, skirmish heavy early game. I wouldn't even say ramping up. It's just matching the pace of what IDH are trying to throw down. A lot of what IDH are doing are, they're just trying to find fights. They have a good individual kind of laning fight. They want to skirmish in the lanes. They want to get leads on 1v1s, 2v2s. But because they forced so early on and they didn't get an extensive lead, 
you can actually see Dorado Gaming Delta saying, we can do the exact same thing, but we can do it better. We have the engage tools. We have the power of the meta with us, and we're going to utilize it. Outside of the top lane, you can find kills in the mid. You can find kills individually in the jungle. You can find it in bot lane. There are so many options available as long as Dorado Gaming Delta are willing to move forward. Hesitation is going to be the main killer of this game. You have to be willing to follow through. Well, Pulse is following through with the Zenith Blade, gets the Solar Flare down. Epic Fail Guy will cleanse the stun, but Shuko's gonna flash drop the Pyroclasm, and Epic Fail Guy's gone. Double teleports coming across, though. BKP's first to show up. Now it's Maharaga's turn. They're gonna try and turn on this wave, but their health bars are melting. False is too low. Maharaga's health bar has been depleted, but Husky Templar is being annoyed, ignored, and he's just sending oh. the volleys through. Nobody's watching the AD carry Ash, who's just burning through the health bars. BKP <laughs> will be next to fall. The burn from Shuko gets it. It's a double to BKP, but it's a fight win overall for Dorado Gaming Delta. I mean, you'll take that pretty dang happy about that mix up. Granted, top lane is going to fall pretty dang quickly. Shane is going to get so much time in the top lane and have a significant gold lead. I mean, the CS speaks for itself. Still, though, what did I just say about hesitation, about following through, about committing to your fights? That was a full commit from the squad and maybe the dragon, not so much. Oh, okay. We'll dive for the dragon. Arrow to I be ungodly. They're gonna flash after. Sutek wants this kill in Husky Templar. And that is back-to-back -back kills. One of them being a shutdown to really even out the gold state. I don't know what people gave their players here, but they, they are playing at a much faster pace than I thought. These oh, yeah. comps can scale. They can easily scale. Both sides can but they're playing it like they don't want to. They just want to fight. It's happening again. Yep, they're just going to lock down BKP. Every stun the Camille and Leona have has been dropped and landed onto the head of this BKP Huey. And Maharaga will pick up another kill to help try and even out this top lane discrepancy. I mean, I think that's a great way to do it. It's just like you would go ahead and not focus the strongest laner in the game or the strongest player on the enemy side. It's just, hey, don't let them get extra kills. Let them do their own thing. We will outscale in a 4v4 and that's what they're playing for later on as well remember shane you don't really have engage tools everyone has to come to you as long as you are split pushing that's your main goal but if you are forced to team fight you've already lost as an allow a grubs now taken on the other side as well this gives six grubs over to the side of dorado gaming delta which means their split push just became just as lethal so very nice grab on their end yeah really good job by juko stepping in the sub jungler he did die for that second dragon, so it's a little bit marred, giving away a 3-0 shutdown, but he's 3-1 and one on this brand, and he has gotten every single early game neutral objective. Most of the times when teams pick up the first two drakes and all six void grubs, statistics say they're going to win it. Mm-hmm. I'm... I would hope so. I mean, you not only got the six grubs, you got two dragons behind it. You have effectively controlled the global objective game very early on into this game's state. With that being said, you also have Ocean Soul, which means the sustainability that you need, that your composition kind of lacks in terms of the HP bar, you're going to be able to eclipse if you are able to pick it all up. So, you know, the tankiness of the Alawi, that won't matter when you could out sustain if you get the Ocean Soul. So, so many kind of things to think about here that IDH have to be worried about. If Shane is not allowed to split push forever and allowed to be this 1v3 monster, your options are dwindling very quickly. And luckily for Dorado De Gaming Delta, is, oh, hold on, BKB's found another engage. They're gonna try and stun lock Epic Fail Guy. He's been stunned for five whole seconds, and he finally gets to use his flash to get back, but his support is gonna have to take the brunt of the damage here. Unbreakable oh. Will, how much can it hold up? It can keep the cow alive, so I'll be on Godly won't fall. But the lockdown might of Dorado Gaming Delta on full display there, and False may be looking for more here. Sutek is holding down the turn with the bigger health bar. Epic Fail Guy still trying to farm out the minions with those grubs. It will clear out the wave. Oh. And that W burn won't just be enough yet for Epic Fail Guy. It actually Jeez. will. Juko gets the kill. That's the Leandri's difference right there. No Blackfire Torch or anything like that. Get that burn. Get that DPS. You put it on a squishy person. Epic Fail Guy just got their cleanse back up, by the way. That early fight would have been vastly different. You would have been safe, would have had enough HP after the bullying. But instead, you now lose your life. You give full control over to this bottom lane. And Templar and Falls now get to roam into the mid lane where BKP is also having a difficult time. 
And this is going to be that chance. Scruff jumping in with the best of them, though. Oh. Just a burst. I couldn't even pass it to you. It was so fast. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of double Trinity Force overruled. <laughs> when you get the lockdown on the way, he is one easy target to knock down. How about Dorado giving Delta? I got to give you credit, Orble. You talked about how much agency they have, even though they do have a bit of a scaling comp. False and Maharaga specifically have really been showing how much they can create with their champions. And we might see it again here. False is once again going in. It is on to Shane. This is the hardest member to knock down. Oh, but they do wow. get the flash out of Shane. Teleport coming through for Scruff. They want this kill onto the Alawi. Leap of Faith down. It's a four versus one. None of the tentacles are able to proc. Really patient play there from Dorado Gaming Delta again to advance their lead further. I wonder where was this squad in the regular season? This over aggressiveness is great considering the composition and they're making cross map plays. Yeah, the arrow is going to stun IB on Godly up. He doesn't have the unbreakable will until he finally will pop it. But he's in the middle of four, so he's going to burn down. Maybe slower than expected, but a slow roast is still a roast at the end of the day. Maharaga picks up that kill. 13 kills now in this early to mid game phase for the Delta squad. This is outrageous. I. I would not have expected this from a 2-3 squad on, on any day of the week. This is a, we have nothing else to lose. We just have to play right and we need to win. I love what they're calling oh. down. Inside of the enemy jungle though, it's very, very dangerous. Maharaga is gonna get oh. sniped and the fight yep. continues. Two shot barrage lands. The damage for BKP is a massive. Tons of pyroclasm she passives though from, from Chuko again. Make sure to even it out. He get, falls, picks up a double kill. And I fear this brand is only going to scale up even worse now, especially at that two item threshold. I am blown away. Normally, when you look at a 2 3 squad, things get slow. Things get difficult because they've shown in the regular season that they can't play and not can't play in the overall sense. It's just they have difficulties. You aren't able to synergize with your team. You aren't able to make plays with current champions or anything like that. Dorado gave me Delta are showing, hey, we just need five weeks to power up and we are good. They're doing this with a sub, by the way. Huge props to them. With this dragon, if you collect it, you will have put yourself in prime position to take over by about 24 minutes and end by 27. Dorado Gaming and Delta have everything they need. They just don't mess it up. You don't get caught out and you will close this one out neatly. It's all on IDH to not make the mistakes as well. And they're going to have to be funneled into playing for these objectives. And Sutek is already very low. He doesn't have the Crescent Guard. That's the jungler picked off with Ocean Drake up and available. That means there's nothing to do here but back off of your ID Hydra. And Dorado Gaming Delta Orbital, how early of a soul can they now play for? That should be within, uh, what is that? That is a 24, I think. 24 is what you can do because six minutes, obviously, or five, actually. I miscounted. Woo! So actually, you're looking at 23. Go ahead and get it. Wow. I don't know. Don't don't let the caster do math. Don't worry. Yep, that's the rule. We don't do math. 23 minute Ocean Soul into this comp. I, I know you were talking about earlier orbital that an, an Ocean Soul is already problematic to give over to Dorado Gaming Delta. 23 minutes in, that might just be game at this point, to be honest. Yep. I mean, even with this Herald would be wild to see. I don't even think they have to wait because they're just finding oh, no. catch after catch. Yeah, BKB, he uses his fear on the false, not on the scruff. So he just pops the minigun and burns through his health bar. They've just been targeting BKP so well in this game. This is a textbook way to make sure a Hawaii does not become a problem in a game of League of Legends, folks. Mm -hmm. You go ahead, just snipe him down. Yes, you got four kills, but you got five deaths and everything else hurts. So, you know, take it for what you will. I mean, that's CS differential. I love this, by the way. Look at Maharaga. Just like, I don't even care that I'm down. So much. You're about to get Flame Horizon, by the way. Maharaga doesn't care because they've been so active on the map. That gold difference is negated by the five kills. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Maharaga is actually even or ahead in gold. That is how much time. Okay, well, no fair behind. But I mean, that could be way worse. Maharaga way worse. is getting so much help. Yep, and he might get some more help here as False has moved over. Sutex hovering, but first roam is going to be to the very powerful oh, Chuko. How quickly can he get here? Shane waiting for his moment. Hextech ultimate him down. Oh. Will the Leap of Faith come across? There it is. Shane picks up the first one, but Chuko burns his health bar down in an instant. Oh, BKP no, teleports it with no health HP. Why are we showing up with 30% HP, BKP? It's a double kill to Chuko. This brand is unleashed for Dorado Gaming Delta. I think BKB tried to TP under top lane tower and Scruff was there to drop the DPS and you can't cancel oh. anymore. You know you can't cancel your TP 
So that's pain. What a oh catch God. again! Who, who is this guy? Where did they find Shuko? Because he's just taking over this game. Flash secures the stun epic fail guy. Gets another one on I beyond Godly. Do they have enough damage to burn through the unbreakable will? No, they won't. But what a mark the substitute jungler is leaving on this series. And of course, as I say that, Caster Curse makes him execute under the turret. That's okay. It's an execute. It doesn't matter. That's just a faster recall is all we call that. 10, 3, and 5. A wild current statement here. And I mean, this is just all around powerful stuff. If we can take some time to breathe here. I just want to mention the most that the squad, Dorado Gaming Delta, have lost. If you take a look at that scoreboard, they have lost a singular tower. Yes, 11 deaths, whatever you want to say. In the global game, they have lost one tower. They have That's gathered it. six on their own. They gathered six scrubs. They've taken all the dragons. They're about to take Baron. I, I'm pretty sure they're they're wanting to as much as possible. They have had full control of this game since I would say about minute seven, and I love it. Now, if they overstep, if False steps up too far, if Husky gets a little bit out there, then things can turn around very quickly. Don't get me wrong. However, it feels like they haven't, and that is their main strength. And their double marksmen still have their fail safes, right? Both summoners are available. Mostly the flashes I'm talking about for Husky Templar and Scruff. So they'll feel somewhat protected. Baron is going to be stirred up on a ward. So ID Hydra know this is happening, but double marksman in a fed brand jungle does mean this Baron burn baby burns. I beyond godly, Sutek are both here, but False's objective is to keep Sutek out of the pit. Maharag is gonna jump on it as well. Very low HP. Oh, what the arrows can hit Sutek. He had no chance to even try and take Baron Nasher, and now they're gonna take their front line. I beyond godly drops. See you later. Sutek, Shane will find a good turn onto a root onto Chuko. That's a big shutdown, but he set everybody on fire. BKB oh. and Epic Fail Guy. Their health bars were far too low, and Maharaga will clean it up. It's only Shane left up. His health bars low. That is a failed flash from Scruff that I have to mention. The chain is soon to fall. He's just stalling for maybe a potential delayed ace. Well, the big word there is ace. The big banner there is purple in the name of Dorado Gaming Delta as they have taken over our opening game of the series. Won't be an ace, but pretty dang close because, hey, you can delay as much as possible. You don't let an inhibitor fall at this time. Main reason is Dragon is up in 30, and you are praying to God everyone is able to get back on time. However, danger is you stalled too long. Your death timer is going to be up at the same time as Dragon. This is going to be a 4v5 fight with almost no information granted inside of IDH. This will... 80% of the time will go the way of Dorado Gaming Delta. They have everything they need to take the soul. Everything they need and more. Three item brand, three item Corky. It's just absolutely ludicrous damage. And like you mentioned, we've now got Maharagas up to eight kills. I'm pretty sure the gold is pretty even between the one discrepancy lane of that earlier game now that he's got a bounty. But the focus becomes this Ocean Drake that is already taken off screen. It's already done. The Ocean Soul is secured for Dorado Gaming Delta. And now they're just going to run down and take any fight they want. The oh. arrow barely seeking by BKP, but false. He's still got that killer instinct in him. Zenith Blade will fall short. They've got Baron buff. They've got Grubs. They've got Shelly on the rift trying to crash in this mid lane. Dorado Gaming are unrelenting right now. If they don't close out right this minute, I'll be very surprised. Outside of a team wipe, they have everything. Look at how quick the tower goes down. IDH, you got to do something. You don't really have a choice. You got to make a play happen. Well, they might have the play coming around on top of them. Tanks to get burned down. Maharaga will jump a little too far forward, but he's able to stay safe with the shield. Epic fail guy's health bar is far too low. And then Ocean Soul started to feel real, real nice. The rest of the team just tops off their health bars, gets Shelly activated, they and they're going to push the grubs, the Baron minions. Shelly's going to crash oh. in the Nexus turrets. Maharaga may be going a little bit too deep, but the stall game has been accomplished. First Nexus turret down. The next one is not going to fall soon after. But maybe a pushback here from ID Hydra. Chuko is far too low to really continue to push. But will that Ocean Soul become clutch? Oh. There is a Solar Flare down onto BKP, basically soloed out by Falls. But Chuko will take the kill. They reassess and they turn their attentions to the Nexus. What a performance. Dorado Gaming just dogged ID Hydra to start off this series. And they're going to get a couple of Constellation kills just to rub salt into the wound as they go up 1-0 in this big-time qualifier bout. So there's a few things we could have learned. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think there's a few things we could have learned there. Um, number one, don't give power picks. 
for all that is holy um there is a moment in time where comfort can only get you so far um that was one of them that was absolutely one of them you gave four i would say four amazing picks over to dorado gaming delta and their confidence just skyrocketed i don't know what the heck happened i appreciate the attempt by idh to try something a little different you know hey go for the allow top lane go for a little bit messy you got the ezreal ezreal looks somewhat okay but you got locked out i have no other words for it dorado gaming delta i don't know what you guys took between week uh one through five and then this qualifier keep doing it you guys played crazy good and, and how about their substitute too i mean chucka was unbelievable on this brand probably the mvp of that first game with how well he performed and maharaga able to hold his own in the top side the double marks we gave through yeah i mean orbital i'm kind of harping on the same points you made this was a overall resounding game one win for dorado gaming delta when they needed it most but the series is not over yet we can't crown them three and three just yet it's up to id hydra to look for a response here they'll have side selection in their hands as we go into this intermission and we'll come back out on the other side to that game two draft to see if we're going to be out of here in a quick succession or we have a series on our hands with the stakes elevated during qualifier time don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody, to your edition of the Aegis Defenders League Qualifiers Edition. And for, in fact, and well, we've had the start that maybe we weren't expecting between two teams identical in record and game score because it wasn't close. Dorado Gaming Delta Orbital handled business, like I think you said, since seven minutes on in that game one. <laughs> There was, and I don't want to cheat uh, Dorado Gaming Delta. Uh, the draft from IDH wasn't great. However, Dorado Gaming Delta, they played that so smoothly. I would not have expected that to be a 2-3 squad. I would have expected that out of like a 5-0 squad. That was clean to the point. Hey, we got the lead, we push. And this time around, you're on red side. I hope to see that even more. Chuko not going to get that brand this time around though. Might throw a little wrench in the plan. Granted though, I don't think it just came from the brand. I think it came from everyone. And I think Jugo can do that on just about any champion, but I do agree the brand was a problem. Brand certainly was a problem. The damage was a problem. But yeah, I, I think the heroes of that game was kind of just how everyone was setting each other up with the, I, mostly, I think False played the best game of everybody. I, that, that Leona constantly finding angles that just set up those damage dealers so, so nicely. So we'll see if they can keep that synergy together as they are now on the red side, ID Hydra. Question now becomes, what do you like so much about blue side? Which then answer, is answered by the next question. What B1 pick do you like most on the blue side? We're about to find out with pretty similar bands after the first game besides that brand and Lilia adjustment from the Hydra side. Mm -hmm. Those are in place, I believe, of the uh, Udyr as well as Nautilus. I think Nautilus, those were the two yes. bands across. And I guess Udyr is really propping up for a lot of people. You just don't want to give that one away, which to be fair, that's up to you. Um, still though, this is going to be the big change here. I wonder what's going to happen. And there it is. We talked about it. The Leona was just too good. And I mean, you're assuming that this is actually just a Leona diff, but the Ash, I like this. It was still so powerful. And then the Braum, that's the other side. It was let's open. I was yep. wondering about that. I mean, it's open. Dorado Gaming Delta still getting an amazing start to this draft. Yeah, Dorado Gaming Delta. They banned Braum on their blue side, so they'll take that trade any day of the week. Braum, pretty good answer to the Leona, and why not run back Husky Templar on that Ash again for the Freljordian combination. Still a lot of power picks up here to really define what ID Hydra want to do with their draft. Like I mentioned in the first draft, we are in a meta dominated by Marksman going outside of the AD carry role with those AP junglers coming along, two of the marketed ones taken away. But there's some AP damage in a more low key fashion with the Kaisa completing the dive composition bottom lane of Kaisa Leona. I actually really like this. So Ash can get stuck on if the Kaisa is running around, but you need another dive buddy. IDH, I think you need another diver in there or you go ahead and play the di disengage comp. Zyra is currently available if you wish to go for that style, yes, it would make you very squishy. If you are planning to have Sutek be that tank in there, go the Sejuani or something of the sort. Hecarim, I can get behind buddy. it a little bit. I can get behind it. It's not great in the current meta. Um, I think it's rising in priority. I think somewhere around A tier, but not amazing. Not amazing. It hasn't blown me out of the water yet. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly, right? I've seen a couple of games played like that. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple of Hecarim's prop, crop, crop crop up oh my gosh stumbling over my words not a lot of them have worked and they haven't worked at higher levels so the king's Rid is looking like the answer will be locked in for for uh chucko there after his brand game still wants to be the big time carry this time switching to the more ad focused role and with the both junglers being locked in as a attack damage carries orbital i feel that we are going to Migrate back to meta of the past before the marksman and decide to dominate the mid lane, considering we're likely to get two AP mid laners with these junglers. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Ahoy is still up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dorado Gaming Delta take it, especially with that fear. You can actually, so Hway fills so many niches right now. I actually really, really like it. it provides CC, provides damage, provides fears, everything of the sort. It can be powerful, but we saw the weaknesses of it. If there's CC on the other side, Hway is prime picking. Right now, though, I like that focus on the top side. Maharaga, honestly, in the early game, did struggle a lot against the Alawi. Because of the current draft, because you locked in your jungle in your bottom lane, you can hard focus that top side. It is matched by IDH with the Camille band behind. So we are going to see a drastically different top lane, which might yield a bit better for Maharaga if you wish to go something tanky like an Orn. Like an Orn, like, you know, Malphite. You can run the Dr. Mundo. There's still a lot of tanks that are prevalent in the top side as much as some of those duelists and bruisers. 
Looks like both of these teams might trade a solo lane ban a piece. The Vigar gonna likely be a target band over to BKP, I would assume. Which is something you don't want to deal with if you're Dorado Gaming Delta. Question becomes for Dorado Gaming Delta, who do they want to give this counter pick prio to? Do you want to give it to Maharaga as he is technically the guy out of his role currently? I wouldn't hate it. Nah, I want to see a blind pick. Only reason is because I really, really do think Scruff played very well in the mid lane. Give Scruff the counter pick, get a little bit of a lead again this time with the Braum behind it. Or you go for that LeBlanc. Uh, this would be a wild blind wow. pick going in, really calling down the uh, BKP, saying, hey, if you want to run that way, go ahead, give it your best shot, and we'll see what we can do. Um, I'm just, no, no, we haven't seen a rise <laughs> in ages, right? Okay. A little bit of a flick, a little bit of silliness. It is going to be a little long, powerful early game coverage. It can synergize quite well with the Kindred. Find the catch, jump in, draw aggro. I, 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 I'm okay with it. Yeah, I, I also think, you know, I think LeBlanc is ro risen up in the meta because she can answer a lot of those annoying marksman mid well. But like we kind of established, not expecting a marksman mid to be, mid to be locked in. That's a whole lot of AD damage from ID Hydra. They will lock the set top lane. I think this guarantees an AP mid laner, but for sure. Blinding set though can be a bit treacherous. He is very powerful in the early game, like we saw in game one from Shane, but he does have a lot of matchups where it, it can be pretty unplayable. So we'll see what that counter pick looks like on the turn for Delta. I mean, granted you can go AD here Ooh. if you wish, but Aurora is still available. Great little bounce around. I quite honestly, I mess with Aurora a little bit and it's so hot and cold a lot of the time. It's just, if you're really good with Aurora, you're solid. And if you can dance away, I mean, that damage mitigation where you go pretty much into another realm and you can play safe. No, it is going to be the Lissandra. I actually have to double check mm. that. I do apologize. I'm not sure if Aurora is currently enabled uh, for the qualifiers. It might be for the playoff bracket for everyone, but I'm, I, I'll have to double check there. However, with the Lissandra locked in, I'm not liking this as much. Yes, you have the engage. Yes, you have the tools to make the plays happen. Lissandra's damage is notoriously quite low. So you are banking on the fact that with the Ring of Frost, with the Glacial Prison, you can overcome the LeBlanc uh, damage output. Yeah, I, I did want to clarify because I know AEL had Aurora enabled and yes, so she's enabled here as well. Last day of Disable was August 4th. So, hey, <laughs> one day after she came off Disable, we nearly could have seen her in the ADL, but we will not. Aatrox set though, you, you, you asked for an orbital. Well, you said we're going to have to get some sort of drastically different top lane matchup. It's not too different. Still two uh, champions that want to get leads and, and slug it out, but still very volatile like that last matchup between the Camille and Alawi. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the difference is, is I actually really, really like Shane. Uh, Shane's output was solid. It's just the champions themselves provide very low mobility. That was my only issue. Now, if you get a little bit of help in that top side, Shane can easily take over and that can provide the threat advantage. I mean, we've seen games go 40, 50 minutes long just because of a split push that and set is one of the best Adam. You get a little bit of lead you go into the bruiser uh, damage output and all of a sudden you thrash people like nobody's business. So right now for IDH, I would like to see them focus on the top lane. Quite honestly, Maharaga doesn't look super comfortable. That is a lane you can exploit. If you do not wish to exploit it though, that is going to be the difficult part. Dorado Gaming Delta, I think have gone ahead and drafted a fairly nice mid to bottom side with the Ash, with the Braum, with that LeBlanc very nice being able to crest over that early to mid bank into the late game with the kindred ash i still think that they have a pretty good time i do like that the uh, that id hydra have now committed to a style of draft that you know like committing to that ideal is a good first step to getting back in a series because yes you know you kind of asked for a dive buddy with kaisa I think you can argue three dive. Everybody's a dive buddy for Kaisa. Yes. Maybe not Lissandra, but you, I mean, definitely set, definitely Leona, certainly Hecarim. And Lissandra can always go forward with her claw as much as she can play back. So ID Hydra have committed to sort of play this game where they're going to pick either the Kindred, either the Ash, and just say, you don't get to play the fight. Sorry, we're just going to kill you. Uh, what, that does make Chuko's Kindred a very big selection with that Lamser's Respite. We'll have to see how that interacts on the, rap, on, the on the Rift. 
lot of fun interactions to come on the Rift in this one. Maybe a closer draft game from game number one in our eyes. Does that mean we're going to get a closer game number two? We'll have to find out after we go to another short break. Stick right with us.
Back on the Summoner's Rift here with a must-win game for the ID Hydra squad as they look to get out of the bottom four of our 12 teams in the qualifier stage. Week six, week one of the qualifier stage and a more complete cohesive draft from ID Hydra as they look to make this a three game series. And everybody just fan starting a little more, a little more ceremonial with the Olympics around. That's what I'm blaming. Oh, come on guys. I was talking about the ceremonious <laughs> start. The Olympics are going on and we have a pause. Yeah, uh, this feels good. Yeah, this feels, this feels real good. Uh, I'm guessing um, there was just a slight little issue. I wonder if it was, I don't think it was summoner spells from what I'm taking a look at. I wonder if this was runes. Hmm. I'm not sure. Either way, yep, a little bit of pause. And I think the issue is as well, uh, I'm just watching. You mentioned the fact that IDH, the composition is a lot more cohesive. I would agree with that. I just personally, I like the tactability that can come with Dorado Gaming's uh, Delta side. I mean, they have great scaling. If you can make it in, granted the Kindred is a little bit out of source, but might just be a Chuko special. So we'll see how it plays out overall. If Dorado Gaming Delta can carry their strength from game one over, we could see a pretty dang quick series. That's what I'm really wondering about. That is what I'm wondering about too. Because, you know, we could talk about drafts, right? How teams have adjusted to draft, but something that we harped on a lot in that game one was just how cohesive and dominating, like, the movement was from the Delta squad in that game one. Like, once they got out of the traditional early game, I mean, it, it was just great movement from false. He was always moving around, playing with uh, Chuko, you know, you, and you'd scruff moving well on top of that. And the way they're able to find these fights and find these picks, like you mentioned it, that's what you expect from a five and O team. That's the domination. So if that holds up and they don't panic in this game too, I don't think we have a series on our hands. Mm -mm. It's going to be a wash. And I'm really specifically looking at this bottom lane. Epic fail guy and beyond godly. They both had struggles trying to take over the lane. It ended up being a Husky Templar and false really running the show there. And yes, Chuko was able to come into the bottom side and help out, which honestly the Kindred if doing so again, it can be even worse scaling or, or even a worse situation uh, for the IDH bottom lane. I just, a big part is I want to see the squad be cohesive and have Sutek really have an impact throughout this game. In game number one, remember Sutek was actually one that started the over aggression, started to find those early ganks and everything like, I think, try to dive in the top side and actually unfortunately died which sucked um they are just little pieces that sutek can make use of and if this hecarim is the answer there you get the ghost you get the early kills and everything like that hey we could see a swing back overall though it will come down to skill i think at the end of the day both sides will have to show their exceptional skill and try and push us to that game three if not we are going to see uh, the likes of dorado gaming delta have one of their first squads make it in to a higher end and there it is unfortunately looks like we have a little bit of a dc maharaga going to try and get their uh, pc up and running trying to get it back to the rift here as we were just teased with the uh the tantalizing prospect of a game two beginning here it's always it's always not fun when you get to this point in the series it is important to remember though that when it comes to these qualifiers if I am not mistaken in learning the format, it looks like you will always match up with, it's kind of like a mini Swiss stage. I would assume you're always gonna match up with a team that has the same record as you. So mm -hmm. I believe, I'm kind of just learning on the fly here. This is what happens when, when there's random, <laughs> random pauses like this. Oh, wait, maybe I'm wrong about that. And what I'm trying to say is that the, the matchups for week seven, or I guess the second week of the qualifiers are, decided and are put together after the results of this week so makes for a lot of fun i'm done rambling because it looks like we are back on the summoner's drift here maharaga has figured out their slight issues with the client oh a very very massive first auto there for chuko oh that's gg oh shane's yeah. on the hunt now shane's like yo chuko you can't get away with that one i'm going to murder you when given the chance 
And that just my happy even oh. Scruff's getting into it. It's I love that we're mid. Yeah. Okay. Auto attack. Auto attack is good. Excuse me. Outside of that though, it doesn't look like either team is going to get too much aggressive warding down. As I say, that Maharaga has roamed down with the numbers advantage, and we might have a bit of a brawl on our hands here. Shane's getting a lot more than one auto on top of him. BKB close by as well, and just trade mm. of health bars, I guess. Nobody even got a ward down to track these junglers. Nope. I think you're more than okay. At that point, just as you say, that false one ahead drop one over on the red buff. So, you know, Sutek will be tracked through their jungle route, which does inevitably kind of choke out to a simple clear. Um, I, I am curious. Take a look at where Beyond Godly and Epic Fail Guy currently are. They're waiting for a chance to try and get a level one or anything of the sort. But you're up against a Braum Ash, so I assume they're more than ready for the situation. The early stage is shaking out like we expected, gonna be fairly quiet, and it, it's going to be that problem of who is going to step up, either make that first mistake or make the first big play. Well, the first mistake, I feel like, was Shane taking that much damage because he actually recalls and then walks back the lane. So he has succeeded level two advantage. A lot of XP in general farm just taken away from Shane here on this top side, and it doesn't help that uh, Sutek is 100% pathing away from him in this early clear. Mm -hmm. Not only that, tracked in their pathing lane. So we we also touched on the fact, that at least you and I, inside of that intermission, we were talking about the fact that for Shane, uh, you actually enjoy this matchup quite a bit. Uh, the set and the Aatrox, Aatrox doesn't exactly win hard. It's going to be that defensive posturing. You still be able to fight later. It's really, I think for Shane, can you dominate this top lane? Are you gonna be able to dominate this lane? Are you going to be able to take over? If you can, that's great. You actually start helping your team out a lot more. However, take a look inside of the jungle. We are seeing our first invade, Shuko. Going ahead and slowing down Sutek in an early invade to steal away the red buff. Yeah, gonna definitely be able to set himself up for a three, can uh, three buff, three quadrant in general. Well, not full three quadrant, but yeah, this red buff is gone. He marked Sutek early, so that means he wants to hunt for this. Oh Hectrum. my God. Does not have flash. But the Q doesn't land from fall, so they can't get the concussive blows stacked up. I be on Godly and Epic Fail Guy have now roamed over, but neither mid laner is a moving. So everybody just walks their happy behinds on out. Honestly, that could have been a kill. Um, if False had actually landed that Q, that would have been a kill because Sutek, I mean, you have nothing. You have Ghost, you don't have Flash. That would have been death, I think. There was enough damage behind it. You have double ADC. It was dangerous. What this does give is Chuka a massive, massive lead. The only thing that feels bad or would have made it feel better, I guess, is if you had gotten your share of the stack. The stack went ahead, spawn on that top side is yeah. going to be quickly converged on. So, you know, the early invade hurts, uh, you know, a little. Still, though, Chuko getting a decent buff up means that you get to clear your entire bottom side and you get that XP lead just aiming for that level five, level six. Oh, boy. Now we might see a potential dive brewing on this top side. Sutek is positioning for it, but he close the blow stun going to come on top of Ibion Godly, breaking up his chain of stuns. False is doing oh, such no a good way. job. He's holding Epic Veil guy at will. Forces to cleanse on his own with those concussive blows, and they're just going to turn the passive right back to Ibion Godly, who does not have a cleanse summoner, and there's a flash from Husky Templar to pick it up. Oh, Another no stun's going to land. That Holy was shit. all false cooking for Dorado Gaming Delta. I get one curse. I get one curse, by the way. That is it. Because that is the wildest sequence of events. Husky Templar flashed under the tower. Was still in range, but I think because of where the auto was and where False was attacking on the other side, the tower changed targets. Instead of Husky taking two tower shots, which is what, is, which is what it should have been, False took one instead. That is Husky gaining a massive freaking advantage. And it's low range. Oh, well. really start her, but do they overstay here? Shield yes. is up, but we can't cut down the chase there. I be on Godly will grab the kill. Flash from Falls. Zenith Blade isn't up. I be on Godly might not be able to catch you. We'll get the stun locked down. There's the Zenith Blade over and the da damage through. Oh, no. And just as we were praising them, <laughs> the Zerato Gaming bottom lane evens out the kill count. I just cannot believe that happened in the bot side. And then you give another two goals over. Now, granted. It doesn't matter as well it matters but it doesn't matter as much i would say it's only one kill over to epic fail guy big part is that it's two kills and first blood that husky templar got which means this bottom lane is pretty much unplayable unless sutek tries to join in and sutek is power farming towards that level six 
problems abounding is BKP is starting to feel the pain. This is now the second time that I think BKP has had to recall in the last 30 seconds. I was watching the TP timers. That hurts. So everything leaning into Dorado Gaming Delta's side from the jungle to mid to bottom lane. Top side though, danger. Another overstay by a Delta member. Maharaga has to burn the flash and the world ender. Showstopper was used by Shane. World ender will take down Maharaga. will go back to a much more passive form. Is it two versus one here? Juco is available. Does not have that Lancer's Respite. All the cooldowns up for Shane does with the E. And look at the spacing for Juco. I mean, Shane doesn't know which way to go. Finally, we'll step up with the Haymaker. Flashes to try and get the kill on him. Maharaga, he will. But it will be traded back by Juco one for one. I think that's the best situation you could ask for. Quite honestly, you got the flash out, you got the damage, and you got a mark on the Kindred as well. So overall, pretty big dub. Dragon being taken by Sutek on the other side is the answer. Remember, in game number one, IDH were completely locked out of literally every single global objective. So this time around, they are going to be happy about the current exchange and being able to uh, kind of give themselves a better foothold for this game number two. They do lose on the grubs, which if they lose all six, I'll be actually very scared of once again, but definitely a much better stance than the previous. Yeah. Still a slight thousand gold lead here for Dorado Gaming Delta. And the most important thing to me is the fact that Chuko has had a very good early game. Engage coming across down on by Agon Godly on to Hunter Templar. There, there is the stop oh, onslaught of shadows for Sutek. Good stun, but it's not going to be enough from Falls, and it's going to be a double kill back to Epic Fail Guy for ID Hydra. And we mentioned it. That's the one way to turn this game back in their favor. Bring down the jungler. Top side, though, going to eat a lot of damage, and this should be that kill. Easy wow. one picked up. I mean, it's process across the board but epic fail guy getting a huge injection of life that's gonna be massive because we talked about how, you already talked about how rough this lane was after the double kill it was gonna be rough for a kaisa into an ash in general but if you can get this kaisa fed with how much dive potential is there for id hydra it's gonna be a pretty powerful way to take a stranglehold on this game but like we also mentioned the top side for once looking very good it's shuko again coming out with a pretty sizable lead of his own. Down in camps, 1-0-1 though. He's stacking up on those marks decently well and primed to be the main carry. I mean, you also need it considering if you take a look on the other side, Sutek has had a little bit more time to farm, has had a little bit better time in that department. So you're up about two camps and you're looking for the other side. Oh. This is gonna be, I believe that mark piece yep. for yourself, which is gonna be really, really nice. Remember four stacks is what we're really looking at. If you can get four, you're golden, you become a champion, you become a powerhouse and you're going to be a much stronger force to contend with. Sutek though, I wanna see another gank. I wanna see another powerhouse play happen. I want to, Maybe see it in the bottom side because Husky Templar still doesn't have flash. Won't have cleanse for sure. That's gonna be really nice. I just wanna see that pressure down there to allow Epic Fail Guy and Beyond Godly to become those menaces once again. Beyond Godly, what? Oh, yep, no cleanse available here for Husky Templar, but the shield from False is so wow. powerful. They drop the arrow, they give the concussive blow stun. I'd be on Godly gonna limp away. This is a uh -oh. fat minion wave, but it's Sutek first to come on over. Here comes the horsey, Sutek riding into battle triumphantly. Good exhaust. He's gonna hit False, and that was a great exhaust like you mentioned there. Solar Flare also gonna whiff from Beyond Godly. And that will ruin any turn of a gank Ooh. there. <laughs> Everyone's playing on a wire right now, by the way. BKB is sticking around in a situation where normally you would just die. Uh, any, like, no mana now. Scruff can dive this. 100% can dive this. But you don't want to. You don't want to cause any chaos. Husky Templar and Falso being able to sustain between a 3v2 situation. This is perfect for them. We mentioned the fight down bot side. And Sustek need to be there about 20 seconds earlier. Which, of course, would have screwed their clear. But you need to be there earlier because Beyond Godly and Epic Fail Guy couldn't have the HP to fight. It actually results in you just not having any good time. And now we get a topside fight. Oh, Mark secured there for Chuko. He is up to three. And Maharaga is much stronger than Shane in this current iteration. A big power spike. That four mark power spike is a coming. I want to now direct everyone's attention to some of the reasons why this gold lead is ballooning nearly 2k despite the fact there's a discrepancy in kills for Dorado Gaming Delta. That is the 30 plus CS leads between their top <laughs> and 80 carry.
Oh, not just that, in the mid lane as well. We are seeing hefty gold leads everywhere, oh, yeah. but we can't even talk about that as top lane is going to break a fight. Yep, World Ender out. Can Maharaga find a two versus one Oh my kill? god! He should. Oh he dodges out on the Haymaker, gets the heal reset, and still has the one under going. I don't think Sutek can win this 1v1 if the sweet spots are landed by Maharaga. Looking for the big Q3, oh. he's going to get it, and he's going to get himself the 2v1 outplay. Oh, I got Sand. Put some respect on my name. No, Bots, we're getting a fight. Cleanses the arrow, but there's more stuns coming your way. Epic fail, guy. That killer instinct is not going to bail you out. Chuko picks up the kill, and Ibeon Gonli is soon to fall behind to the might of the two marksmen. Oh, Chuko's yeah, going to flash it. after and get it. It's a double kill, back to back double kills, and a snap of a finger for Dorado Gaming Delta. Four marks in under 12 minutes. This is. <sighs> We mentioned it before, the strength of this squad, Dorado Gaming Delta saying, listen, if you don't apply the pressure, we will. And it happens at pretty much the exact same timer. By the way, I would like to point out, this is around this time is when Dorado Gaming were like, okay, we're taking over the game. It doesn't freaking matter. We are going to own pretty much everything you wish to do. And we are going to show it off. Haraga now soloing without ultimate, by the way, on the top side they are proving that they are the more dominant team and i wonder if this is that shuko kind of representation just saying hey i'm a kindred i want to get kills i want to get farmed and i want to win so let's push the tempo forward with that coverage of the top and bottom lane now there is nowhere else for sutek to go and you are now playing on not just a back foot but your last leg dragon is now available it doesn't really matter for you everything is going dorado gaming delta oh boy and Epic Fail Guy, just way too far up on your own into Scruff's LeBlanc, a dash based champion, and he'll fall for the third time there. Three bounties on the top side of Dorado Gaming Delta's comp, and they've broken open what could be the decisive game, too, as they are still not secured into a playoff spot just yet. And it's only getting worse for ID Hydra. BKP gets slowed, canceled the back. Here's the Conclusive Blow stun. It might even not let him go to the claw. What timing! Makes the Frozen Tomb come out, but there should be enough burst damage from Scruff, though. Doesn't want to go for it. Well, Flash and make me eat my words in an instant. Finds the solo kill. Even the minion pathing can't dissuade him. We mentioned it before. Like, Scruff could have done it, I want to say, like, three minutes earlier. Hey, no, listen, we wait for the big dog moment. So, well played overall. And with this hefty lead, you mentioned the gold lead that was obtained just straight CS. Is now going to balloon ever further. You're sitting at about 6k. Go ahead and bring out that ascension. Maharaga just setting up this dive. Yep, flash to secure the Q3. There's the showstopper haymaker combination. Oh, Sutek wow, is stalling. That's a big on Style of Shadows to land two double fears. Forces false to drop the glacial fissure. Teleports coming behind. Can Sutek fly oh, a kill? Slow. He's gonna run just short, and the Langer's respite's gonna bail out false. ID Hydra just can't even find one kill right now when they're out playing dives. Not only can they dive, they can outplay, they can sustain, oh and they can God. dive a 1v2 to no win! Yeah, Husky Templar gets the first one to turn aggro. He's going to turn it. The flash was too late from Epic Fail Guy. And now the reverse dive goes the way even of Dorado Gaming. Husky Templar showing them the business. I can't even say this is a draft diff now. This is a straight up Dorado Gaming Delta showing off their skills, showing off the micro mechanics. The cleanse timing from Husky Templar, the ability to step just out of range to ensure you draw that fight out for as long as possible. The gold difference is about 1,000 in everyone's pocket. Save the support. I hate saying this so early on in the game, 14 and a half minutes. I do not see that many doors that are open currently to IDH's squad. The only hope they have is the fact that they have a decent amount of agency and CC to maybe pick out one person and try and blow them up. But it's really hard to lock down a LeBlanc. Can't be the target there. Husky Templar is the obvious one, but the bounties are on this very fed Kindred and Aatrox. And we already saw what happened the last time they tried to go man advantage oh, no. into Maharaga. And Langer's Respite makes it even harder to go for Chuko. Yeah, I, I don't see many doors at all. The only doors I see opening up is these towers opening up the map more for Dorado Gaming Delta. It's just, I, I have to give them props. They know the qualifiers is their big hope and they are sending themselves for, they're saying, hey, we're gonna play into next week and we are going to make it painful for you as well. I love this rotate down, by the way, you go ahead and bring Maharaga down here, who's about to have TP up and available. 
And you just say you're gonna power through. Now in that tri but you're gonna try and fight, but I don't think that's what you wanted. And this is a 4v3, but BKB is not feeling too healthy. They're still going to look for the push. False will commit the flash. Solar Flare is going to hit, but a Glacial Fissure behind will stall out. They're going to try and burn down False here with all four members, but his shield is standing up tall. Oh and Maharag is just ripping through the back line with his World Ender-esque phrase. Four kills with the snap of a fingers. Dorado Gaming Delta have leveled up for the qualifiers. A two pair with an almost ace on top might as well. I have no words. That was a last ditch attempt by IEDH in the Iridescent Dawn squad. The Hydra's heads have been cut. There are no more rejuvenations. There's nothing that they can do. I mean, this is just, we're literally just waiting for Dorado Gaming Delta to finish out this series. Yeah, I mean, that's just how lopsided it is. Maybe some more desperation coming out from Ibion Godlies. He's really trying to kill off Chuko. He still has the Lambs Respite available, mind you. So, well, he doesn't get to burn it. Good stun lock, I guess. Makes me my words for BKB. Oh, no, now another TP. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah, this is not a good TP here for Shane. He already lost his AD carry. Custom Blow Stun's going to come out. He has the Haymaker available to look for a turn, but it just doesn't pack a punch at this point into the game. It's far too nerfed. Scruff goes on a rampage in this inhibitor turret. Not long for the world. Uh, Slayer, Slayer. I like how Maharaga right now, if you were to look at a vacuum of this series, nobody would have known that they're a sub top laner. At least in this, Not game. In this game. Maybe last game. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, last, maybe last game. game. This oh, one, it on. doesn't matter. You have World Ender again. Yep, he's got it back up. He's just going to heal through this. How much damage can Maharaga turn out? He's looking for his highlight play. He is going to run out of the World Ender soon, though. Uh -oh. The stun lock is coming across. Maybe the caster curse is back. Shut down over Epic oh, Mill, guys. Oh, the reinforcements are in. Scruff drops right in and drops in an instant BKP. And now the front line will get mowed down. A double kill back to this LeBlanc that's quietly now 6-0 with the Medge Eyes. Dude, this is looking like my solo queue games, except I am IDH's squad. Like, <laughs> where did this, where did this oh. guy who said fill top lane go? Like, oh yeah, I can win this easy. This is a wild of Shane. Shane oh can do God. nothing right now. Yeah, the Haymaker shield just burns through in an instant. Toronto giving Delta, do they've got, do they got plans after this? They're looking to end it here. They're not even resetting. <laughs> I Listen, I gotta get food. Oh, TP yeah. from the backside? Oh, okay. Will the TP here we work? go. This should be the throw. This is the North American throw, I, I expect. False is far too low. Onslaught of Shadows forward. Husky Templar is going to flash back. They do have the Lambsers respite to buy time, but they're on the wrong side of the fight. Shuko should just get bursted down, and a wave of kills back to ID Hydra. As we see Dorado Gaming start to play with their food. I, I, maybe we're seeing a little bit too much right now. You think? There's still <laughs> so much to play for. Look at this. You're going to. Oh, no. Oh, it's no. going to hurt. <laughs> yep, there's the solo lanes. Maharaga and Scruff are going at it alone, and they immediately pop for two kills. BKP slow down, make it three. Just when you thought the door was inching open, Maharaga kicks it back shut. They didn't just kick it, they kicked down the whole dang wall, the framing, the outline, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Stunts, the entire 20, thing's 20, coming down. Yeah. It's yeah, all coming the nail, down. The nails popped off, the hinges are gone. It's like, geez, okay. They have <sighs> decimated this game to oblivion, and you have to give respect to this entire squad. It started with Husky in the bottom lane. It started with Husky and False. You mentioned it, False playing an immaculate game on the Leona previously. This time around, just blowing them up left and right. And Maharaga shutting down a set that could bring about the end of the series or end of the game. They showed up nine, two, and seven. And then Scruff, who in game one was oh, so wow. quiet with how they want to play. This time around, it's slaughter. Well, I say slaughtering as we do see a possible. <laughs> Please tell me they're just smack talking. They're like, yo, what was that? Okay, no. Oh, man, that would be so funny. Scruff's like, wait, why did I get the kill? He just immediately pauses. Uh, that is a 1,000 gold shutdown into the hands of a McPhail guy who does have eight kills. And I think with the gold he just got off there, we'll get pretty darn close to three items. But like you mentioned, it's an 11K gold lead by this point at 20 minutes. Baron hasn't even spawned. This game is over whenever Dorado Gaming Delta decide to stop having a little bit of fun with it. This is, yeah, they, I wouldn't even be surprised if they decide to go with a little bit of a, 
a little bit of silliness you know the coliseum style but nah they're, they're looking to end here which i definitely appreciate i mean baron's up if you so wish you don't have to force mid lane you can look elsewhere so we'll see what they do curious what chuko's stacks are at uh by this point i would assume we're at uh five okay five. so he's kind of mellowed out on the stacks he's actually not you went from a head schedule to i think right on schedule i would have expected yeah. him to be up at seven by this point I and mean, he was at four well, at 12 minutes here's the issue shugo hasn't been allowed to get kills like it's <laughs> It, we're, we're not saying it's been bad or anything, but you have literally been trying to help out with the lands vested and everything. Maharaga, Scruff, and Husky had just been killing them too quickly. Like, it, this is specifically the mainstay players, the main squad stepping up and saying, yo, we are going to win, and it doesn't matter what we have to do, we're going to take the victory. So, you know, I don't blame Juko for not getting the stacks. I blame the rest of the team for hogging the spotlights. Uh, definitely feels that way. Baron already gone, by the way. Sutek desperately tried to jump in. Oh. He's doomed. This might be the final fight of the series without far ahead Dorado Gaming Jeez. Delta R, and it's towned by the Titan that is Maharaga. Jump in from Shane, though. He teleports into a showstopper, but he's alone. The Haymaker won't even oh find a trade on the Husky Templar. It's a triple over to Chuko. It's a teleport forward into the base. Here comes the killing blow from Maharaga and the rest of Dorado oh. Gaming Delta as they're going to push their series score to three and three and put themselves right in line for a playoff spot in the ADL. I am so, so proud of this squad. We mentioned that this could get messy. Both teams sitting at the exact same scoreline, exact same game line, and they needed to show up here. They need to show that they can make it in, and I think they got it right here. They're just patting the stats at this point. Yep, they're just taking the kills as they come. If I told you, all the Aegis loyal viewers at home, that these were two teams with the exact same game score and record going in, you would have called me crazy. And that's because Dorado Gaming Delta just looked like they found a new <laughs> life in this qualifier stage. And they'll aptly do it. 22 minutes to take the 2-0 sweep. Even faster than game one. Yeah. Even faster than game one. We sat there, we said IDH, they have a much better draft this time, a little bit more engaged, a little bit more strength behind it. And they did. They couldn't really execute on it. The lanes fell apart, and that's what it really comes down to. And when you take a look at just about any team, you have to get your laning under control. And at the end of the day, Dorado Gaming Delta just had it much more on lock. From a micro mechanic standpoint, they were miles ahead in this series miles ahead might be putting it lightly and it is so <laughs> fun to see another Toronto gaming roster leveling up come playoff time stop me if you heard that one before I I, I know Zola is pretty happy that that is the reality we are in like I mentioned they'll move to three and three uh, not you know the qualifiers is new to the ADL so I don't want to sit here and say they're locked for a playoff spot but they're in pretty good stature for it. And nonetheless, as you only have to be in that upper eight echelon to make the playoffs in the ADL. Quick wrap up for our first week of qualifiers, but Orbital, I don't know our matchup next week, but the stakes are just going to be even higher as I'm, you know, I'm prophesizing that we'll have a matchup where one team makes playoffs, the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think so as well. And I'd love to actually see Dorado Gaming Delta, see if this was just a one-off thing, if this is the start of the Cinderella story or but this is going to be their mainstay for the rest of the time because, I mean, it, this showing was great. Shuko stepping in, Maharaga in the top lane. Maybe that was the mix that they needed. I'm not going to say that. I don't know what they say behind, you know, the closed doors, behind the, uh, you know, the review room or anything like that. But whatever you guys did looked great. IDH, though, good luck trying to make your way into the top eight next week. Good luck indeed. Appreciate all you guys sticking through here. Always a blast to cast with you, my friend Orbital. And PVS, shout out behind the scenes running things. He has set up a raid for Aegis. We're going to go show some love to another Titan, pun intended, of the Tier 3 space. Titan Esports is running their Week 9 of the Divinity League. So make sure to go show some Aegis Esports love over there. And thank you again once more for popping in on a Monday. Like I always mention, there's a ton of Aegis action rolling through. The, the You know, we got the Emerald League coming up soon. AML is tomorrow as well. But the important thing, make sure you come back, not for me, 
but for Orbital, next week, Monday, qualifiers <laughs> will wrap up, and we'll see exactly what eight teams are moving on to the playoffs. Until then, take care, and we'll see you soon.